Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure and honor for me to be with you today to lead this midweek Bible meditation. And I want to thank Pastor Jin for giving me the opportunity to, to uh, lead uh, in this difficult time. I first want to say how, uh, how connected I feel with you, to each of you through the use of technology, but I also would remind you of the fact that even though we're separated by space and time, we are united through the love that God gives us through his son, Jesus Christ. So again, even though we're separated, we are bound by the love that God brought into the world when Jesus was born, went to the cross, and rose up from the grave. The word that I will be reflecting on today is the word hope. And certainly I'm sure that this might have been a word that has come up in conversations that you've had. But before I go into my, my, my message, my meditation, I just want to lead us in a brief uh, prayer, which will be followed by the scripture lesson. And it is this uh, scripture lesson that will be the focus of our time together today. So let us come to the Lord in a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Father, help us to find hope in the presence of chaos. Father, create within us the ability to see you in all things. Even in times of darkness, may we place our hope in you. For it is you, and you alone, Father, who guides us, inspires us, and brings us to everlasting hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture lesson today is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 121. So if you have your Bible, please turn to that Psalm. I'll be reading from the first verse to the end of the chapter. Just as a side note in regards to this Psalm, uh, I was talking to Tom, who is my uh, roommate and friend, and I share things with him that I'm going to present to the church. And I began to read this scripture and he stopped me. He actually yelled the word, stop. And I said to him, what's the matter? He said, do you realize that the scripture that you're about to read was the same scripture that was read in the Congress this morning before they voted on the stimulus package? I said, well, I really didn't have any uh, realization of that. I said, but I take it as confirmation that God wants me to present this, this, uh, this uh, scripture to the people of the church. And so with that in mind, brothers and sisters, this is a reading from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch you over your life. The Lord will watch over you in your coming and going, both now and forevermore. I've had the opportunity, as I'm sure you have, to discuss the current health crisis with family members and friends. In my conversation with people, I found one thing to be constant, and that is when a group of people is faced, are faced with the same problem, each person in that group will come up with a different conclusion as to how the problem should, we, should be dealt with. Although I feel this is a natural occurrence, there is only one word 
that can truly describe what we must do, or perhaps another way to look at it is what we must give up in order to safely get through this situation. And that word is control. Psalm 121 tells us that God is there for us. God wants to be with us. God wants to be the source of our joy, peace, and hope, even in the most difficult situations. But this scripture lesson, I believe, also reminds us that we must be willing to, first of all, surrender and give God control of our lives and that situation that we face. Let me ask you this. Didn't God provide the people of Israel with hope when they came to the Red Sea? They came to the Red Sea and they thought that their flight to freedom was over because they were looking at the situation in a worldly sense, in a secular way, rather than crying out to God. But what did God do for them? He parted the Red Sea. The ground was dry, and they got over safely to the other side. By way of another example, let me ask you this. Didn't God give hope to Daniel when he was cast into the lion's den? Daniel, if you read that scripture, Daniel was prepared to die in order to honor his God. But what happened? When the king called down into the lion's den the next morning, he called out and Daniel, Daniel answered because God had locked the mouths of the lions shut. They were fast, fastly closed. And in the midst of that darkness, God gave hope to Daniel. The Bible tells us that we will always face difficult situations in our lives. But the thing that I would ask you to remember today that although God never takes the situation away from us, he helps us get through it. And this is how we have to approach this situation with the, with the coronavirus or anything else that we face. The time is dark. The future is uncertain. But God is the source of our hope. And he is willing to give us the three basic elements that we need. The first is joy. The, the second is peace. But the greatest one of all is, is hope. God never said that we would be without challenge. But if we are willing to surrender, if we are willing to come to him, he is willing, as he did for David, as he did for Daniel, as he did for Noah, Joshua, and all the other saints of the Old Testament. As he gave them hope, he, he is willing to do the same for us. For our God, is, I'd like to refer to God as being a God of equal opportunity. He doesn't do for one and not for the other. What God did for those people in the Old Testament, he is willing to do for us. He is the author. He is the creator of our hope. Just surrender to him. Come to him. Pray to him. Let him know how you feel and what is on your, what is on your mind. And in a short time, we will get through this. And we will be better off. We will be stronger because we realize that how dark this situation is, how hopeless it is, God brought us through it, and we are better off for the fact that we didn't travel the journey alone, that we traveled it with our God. Let us pray. Father, 
when we are hurting deep in our souls, when we shed tears both day and night, when we seek comfort from worldly things, help us to remember to give you the control. When we do, Father, we find that there's no reason to despair. There's no reason to, to feel alone. There's no reason to be afraid. For you, Father, are the creator of all things. And that includes our joy, hope, and peace. Now, brothers and sisters, I pray that the Lord will bless you, the Lord will keep you, and his, his love will fall upon you and those you love. Have a good week. Amen.